Yeah. Good to go. Good to go. We had a little conversation um, before we started live. We are talking about the news and notes from UFC Fight Night Green versus Makachev. Um, before we get to the brilliance of Islam Makachev, which we will, I want to talk a little bit about some of the prelim action. Mark, Mo, did y'all see any of this prelim action? Not me. All the top three fights on it. All three interesting. What are your takeaways? Terrence McKenney's a fucking killer. He's got a fucking killer instinct and just jumps on every opportunity. This is his longest fight at two minutes. (laughs) 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 So, let's go. He's definitely one to watch coming up. One of my personal faves at lightweight right now, um, out of the prospects, He's on the he's on the rise, like you said. He's 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 heating up. Terrence McKinney opened this fight as a minus one hundred five uh, betting dog, actually, because Faraz Zahim was minus one fifteen as a favorite. <clears throat> like you said, none of Terrence's fights have left the first round. This was his longest time in the cage at two minutes eleven seconds. You don't get paid by the hour, no. Oh. So. Make that money. Make it make it quick. I think they said his last three fights were less than two minutes combined. He owns I think he's the current owner of the fastest knockout at lightweight at six seconds. Correct. Jesus. Yep. Watch out. I'm telling you. And I think- he's right now, um I've been I've been ter- I've been riding the Terrence wave and just basically loading up every time and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start the pants and juice. I know it because he's gonna he don't get he's gonna blow up and then I'll never get a minus one hundred five Terrence again. Yeah, he he definitely when he came in, I think that six second knockout was his debut fight, and he showed that it wasn't just a wasn't just a fluke knockout. So there you go. Yep. Uh, shout out to Terrence Kenny. Keep it going, my G. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep riding the wave. Uh, speaking of waves, look, Ignacio uh, Bajarmones, I hope I said your name correctly. I gave it all. I even rolled my tongue a little bit. Um, my man had one of the best knockouts last year with that wheel kick. And he came on these prelims with a lot of hype. He actually closed deeper than minus 200 as a favorite against Rong Zhu. He started. He opened as minus two hundred, but I think he was as high as, as some books. He was as high as like minus three sixty, minus three forty. Big favorite over Rong Zhu. I think Rong ended up not making weight or something, right? Yeah, he missed weight by by a little bit. Is I don't think it was by much. Didn't he get choked out by some? Was it the Brobo, Bozo choke or something? Rong Zhu, how did he lose? Yeah, he got choked. He got choked out. Well, here's how he lost. I'm gonna tell you how he lost. The choke wasn't what the choke is what finished him off, bro. He hit him with he, uh, Ignacio, kicked him in the face with the with the Silva versus uh, Vitor the t- front t- kick, right mm-hmm. to the face, right to the chops. Ooh. It was nasty. It was and it was on the um, in a scramble like he was. Rongzu was trying to get up. And then as he got all the way up, and he was still kind of like leaning forward, he was like, mm, toes to your nose. Yeah. He, he pulled the smell of my toes and choked you out. Yep. He, he's, like, like, he's like, you see my feet? Smell them. Now sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was a thing of beauty. Shout out to um, Ignacio. He's on a, a little win streak now too, man. And this is another lightweight. So this 155-pound division is these guys are unranked. The guys we just mentioned, they're not even ranked. So this 155 division, man, Shark Tank. Mm-hmm. That's probably can we is it safe to say that's the deepest division in the UFC? I think it's been the deepest since the merger of WEC a long time ago, but talent wise now it's looking great. 
Yeah, I think it's always been one of the front runners, but it it kind of flipped back and forth between featherweight and lightweight is how it just consistently went. And I still think that it can, but lightweight's making a, a very definitive stamp on it lately. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree with that. I agree that the 145-pound division and the 155-pound division were neck and neck for a while. But I feel like 55 is pulling away. Right. The new guard is definitely showing up a lot more than Featherweight's new guard is. Yeah. Not that they don't have stars there. They just they shine a little bit brighter. There's just so much raw talent at the bottom of this division. Like, and all these guys are going on really strong win streaks. I want to skip ahead a little bit to give a shout-out to another lightweight. Um, I'm going to try this. I'm going to give this one strong shot because I was pronouncing it Armand Shoryukin. <laughs> but I was corrected. Armand Shoryukin, okay? Hey, close enough. Uh, he, he opened as a minus 220 favorite versus Joel Alvarez. Uh, in another lightweight bout, and Armand would look look phenomenal, man. He beat the ever living fuck out of Joel Alvarez. I don't know how that was the, the first round, man. That was a one sided beatdown. Yeah, one hundred percent a one sided beatdown, complete dominating performance, and Armand saying that he is ready to just take on any comers. If you look at the career path of Armand Sirkayan, I'm going to just show you again for right now until he gets ranked. He is ranked. I think he's, he's 13. Ranked. Ooh, so he, buddy. He went into this fight 13, so he might move up a spot. Maybe. Well, let's see the rankings right now. Maybe two. Well, Armand Sirkayan... His career path looks really similar to what Leon Edwards was if you compare it to how Leon and Kamaru had their first face-off. And then Kamaru went on to go to the title, and Leon didn't lose again. Except for that loss to Leon. He didn't lose again, if you count the Masvidal two pieces of loss. He didn't lose again until... um, Well, he didn't lose again. And now he's competing for the title. You think that's a similar path here? You think Armand and um, Islam are going to meet up again at, at the top? I say yes. I say I think they will meet up again. I don't think it'll take as long as it did for Leon Edwards. <gasps> Leon Edwards took that uh, two-piece loss, and he also took that loss to Nate Diaz. So, you know, that kind of stifled him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the the Diaz fans. You guys are insane to me. You guys blow my mind. This man gets the eleven shit kicked out of him for four and a half rounds and he punches the man one time. And that's victorious for you. Lovely. He got about five punches in that one minute. <laughs> look, he got one slap and a nice nice look he did angle like he did put Leon into the shadow. Well he didn't go to the shadow round, but he went into the, the upside down. He went yeah. into the waiting room for it? He was he was an upside he, he was, was an upside room. down yeah for real. <laughs> yeah, like, let me take a seat. He, he didn't he didn't he didn't he didn't fall. I give him credit. Yeah, but he did do it. But his legs were in a bad place. Uh-huh. He was in a bad place. Um, but I just wanted I did want to give some love to Armand. Um, what a what a performance! And Joel Alvarez might have to think about moving up. Um. He's a really, really tall and heavy guy for 155 pounds. I believe he's six foot three. What? And yeah, he's 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 big. And he missed. This is his third time missing weight at at 155. He didn't make weight. His record isn't yeah. too bad either. No, he's good. What's crazy about it is he's really good. And going to this fight, I thought he was a live dog. I thought he was a, one of those underdogs that has a real shot to win. Uh, one of those, like, because he was, Armand's open at minus 220. 
And I was like, Joel Alvarez is a killer. He has a legit shot at, make, like, at pulling off the upset. I was way wrong. This is uh, out of left field, though. He, he does have some cool tattoos, though. <laughs> so I, personally, his I like artist, his style. His artist is uh, very talented. I think he's Did Spanish. You? I think he's from Spain. He's from Spain. He's yeah. uh, a matador. The phenom. Yeah. Translated. No, he he look, but his skill. I mean, stylistically, I think he'll do really well at one seventy. He just had to cut so much weight. He look. He looks good. I think he'll. He's gonna have to do something with that wrestling because Armand took him down at will, and then Great literally, disease. yes. I don't know if it's a product of Armand just being so dominant as a wrestler, or maybe some deficiencies in Joel's game. Combination of both. Not sure. I'm gonna say it's because Armand already had his got the lower uh, point just because all he had to do is stand up next to him. He's already low on him. So. <laughs> hey, oh my goodness! Of, speaking of those two, right? Uh, Islam and Armand, Armain, Armand, Armand. There's another dude here, right like you know, Armand. Show you. <laughs> Who was the 170 guys that? Uh, that eventually they're gonna meet up. That we we're talking about. I know it was uh, Brady and somebody else. Who else was it? Brady Jamayev. Like, yeah, you think those two is gonna be like a similar situation eventually? Kind of like Islam and uh, well, Jamayev might jump up straight to the title shot if he beats Gilbert Burns. D- no, no doubt. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So you he think beats it's him. gonna be Brady working his way up to that point. Wait, Brady and Shamayev already fought? There was no, already no, no, a no, no, no. That that might happen, and you think it'll be like, damn, no, nope, it won't happen, because if Shamayev wins, he's gonna fight for the title. It won't mm-hmm. be like an early fight. Never mind, scratch that. Yeah, yeah. Well, sticking to this card, um, one <clears throat> at the UFC fight night, Green versus Mak- Makashev. Armand Petrosian and Gregory Rodriguez had a middleweight bout. To me, that was the fight of the night. Yo, that, that was a slobber knocker. Straight yeah. up. Straight up scrap. I mean, I'm not even mad at the split decision at this point. Not in this fight. One referee, one one, one judge, I think it was Tony Weeks. Blue, he gave it three rounds. He, he It was... 3027. I don't understand how it could be 3027. Unless you just discount everything Gregory did and it's just only highlight what Armand did, which I mean, uh, for a fan to do that, understandable. But for a judge, I'm like, come on. Like, you, you really think George lost every round? I mean, Gregory lost every round? He didn't win. One round in that fight because like, there's points when Armand had to survive the fight. Like he he and he did. I give him credit for that. He did. Um, he showed his toughness and he was able to get out of some very compromising situations. But to just disrespect Gregory like that was, with a thirty twenty seven is I don't I just don't understand, man. I don't see. I want to see his scorecard and what he wrote down. I can find it. Hold on. Let's see. I mean, those those judges were questionable because the women's fight very questionable. Yeah. The Kim versus Coera. Yeah. Priscilla. Oh my that god! That was a very questionable uh, decision right there. Before we move on to uh, other fights, I want to give a shout out to um, Armand Petrosian for getting the win. I don't, I don't think he. I'm not saying that he didn't deserve the victory because he, he he put on a great show. And both men, like I said, it takes two to make a fight of the night. They both came to bring. They both brought it. So I got to give them, got to give both guys credit. And shout out to Armin Petrosian uh, for taking the win. Our men and our man. My man, my man. Good shit. Um, I don't know how I found that judge's scorecard stuff before, but I can, this UFC website is so... Yeah. Wishy washy. Yeah. 
We need to find better uh, sources. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Maybe. But Tony Weeks, you know, he's been around forever, so you'd think he'd know what he's doing by now. I don't know how he does that. I, I could see it going either way on this fight, which is why I wasn't mad with the split decision. But, yeah, I don't see three rounds to Armin. Definitely not. See, the fight could be a draw. And then, if that judge would have... No, it still would have been split, but... Better than the 30-27. Right. I, I just... I, I, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm I'm over it, man. These judges are just... Trash. It just doesn't make any sense, them. man. Like, it's, it's almost like... Like they just mail it in, man. Like they're not, they're not even, they're not even watching. It's like it's almost like they're not watching to me. Like it's because if you if you were watching that with a a real critical eye, like you understand what you're looking at, and that's the answer you got. I really want to, I want to see a, like who trained you. Like how did you, how did you get to where you ever see like a a Nick math equation and you get an answer that's nowhere near the answer. I'm like, how do, how'd you get there? Like, what method did you use to get to that answer? I want to see your work. Show me the work. So, do they... This is out of curiosity, because I'm not sure how this exactly works. Do they rotate out the judges like they do the referees in all these matches? Or are they the same three judges for the whole card? It's not the whole card. I think they do, like, two fights in a row. Then it's the next set of judges. Okay. Because I, I was about to say... Last time, that's what it looked like. I feel like they need to rotate out these judges because maybe they are getting a little fatigued on a, a lot of it. Maybe because I mean, old and tired. Watch it, trying to pay attention to that depth of 16 fights in a row is a lot. So I, I do hope that they at least rotate these guys out to kind of give their eyes rest a little bit. I found it. What scorecard do you want me to look up? Brian? The one? The one, right? Oh, oh yeah, no, no, no. That was um Petrosian. Petrosian and Tony Rodriguez. Yeah, Tony Weeks. Let me see what other fight Hey, you guys think he uh was the judge for the female fight? Probably. No nope. Probably. He was not. Mm. Damn, Sal Diamato had it for uh the Brazilian chick? And they all had it for her? Jesus. Yeah, that was unanimous decision for Priscilla. I don't know how. I honestly don't know how because she definitely lost at least two rounds. <laughs> Yo, she got pieced up. And like, she did some damage though with them elbows. What round Even was the, it that she uh started just throwing elbows at third round, right? Third round. No more she, fish, she just all did elbows, it too right? late. Yeah. Did, did they say if she like broke her hands or something? Mm. Uh, I don't know. I think she just found success in those elbows and just went with it. Yeah, she cut uh Sun Kim's cousin's face all up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sun Kim, poor son. Why are you, he always catching strays? Because he deserves it. This man always catches strays. <laughs> what do you mean? They're Korean, bro. Same name <laughs> and everything. All that man, all that man did was exist. Yo, this is cousin. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, Gion, Kim, Sun Kim's oh cousin, my bro. God. <laughs> if you ask him, he'll tell you. He's like Sun yeah. Kim breeds. It's his cousin, bro. It's his cousin from uh over there. How many rounds did they give her? Though? That's what I want to know. Obviously, we're moving on to the Kim versus Koya fight, but mm -hmm. I agree with the judges mm -hmm. saying that she lost the first round. Yeah, and I agree with them with her winning the second round, but I, I, I mean, I could see how they saw her losing the third round because she was getting lit up with some elbows. Yeah, but the other lady was yeah. just as uh, messed up. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kim did land some really crisp, crisp jabs in that third round, but if you talk about significant strikes and doing damage, trading jabs for power elbow shots not a good trade 
Yeah, but she outstruck her by 70 stri significant strikes in two of the rounds. Like, the, it wasn't even close the amount of significant strikes. Yeah, I, th <laughs> like, I think the judges saw damage and blood for this one, and it was like, yep, she won. And you know what? That's, right. that, that, that is what happens sometimes. Sometimes the judges look at overall damage more than they look at just scoring points. Like, just because you landed, you know, 16 shots that were, you know, seemingly ineffective. Like, they, they, they were, I mean, they were significant. Like, you did actually land the shot. It didn't hit the elbow or the shoulder. You, you connected the shot. But it wasn't like a damaging blow. And it didn't make it ca cause like your opponent to bleed or knock them down or whatever. She, she it might... was uh, she was a little, she was a little drunk. Priscilla. Yeah, she was doing a little two step. Yeah, okay. She, she had a couple of rounds where she was doing the two step, and she obviously had some uh, survivor modes where she shot for takedowns and stuff too. So, I, okay. I don't know. To me, it was a clear win for Kim, but. I, I don't know. I, I guess they were just looking at it. The same argument I make with a lot of fights where, you know, a lot of people have this counter-striking type style where they have to be on their back foot, and that's their style. And it just never works out in the judges' eyes. Yeah, they, they, the judges seem to favor the person advancing and the person, the person being aggressive. As opposed yeah. to the person with a more methodical, patient strategy of like wait and counter, the judges seem to favor that more. And I can understand, like watching it live, it looks like the other person is winning because they're they're coming after the, the other person. Yeah, yeah. Um, moving on to the middleweight, uh, Misha Serkinov taking on Wellington Thurman. Uh, I'm going to officially uh, rest in peace, Misha. When it comes to me betting on you, I want to just have a little memorial for my boy um, Misha Serkinov. It's been a good run, not really. Um, I have done nothing but catch multiple L's betting on you at two hundred five, and now at one eighty five, you've been doing this to me again. So uh, I'm officially retiring from betting. It's a breakup on Misha on Misha Serkinov. It's over. It's a breakup. It's over. You're going to bend against them? I've seen what I need to see. <laughs> it's over. You're going to bet against him? Yo, watch. Don't do not do it. Because as soon no, as no, you bet against I, him, he's going to win. Don't do it. When don't I see his it. name, if I see his name on a fight card, that fight don't count. Unless he's fighting the, unless he's fighting the executioner, I'm taking the executioner. We got to see where this goes for him, too, because, you know, this is his third loss in a row. Obviously, one was at light heavyweight and then two at 85. But it is not going well for him. And he's looking at his next fight if he gets another one in the UFC, which I'm sure he will. I think they'll give him one more. Uh, if he doesn't win that one, I think it could be a wrap for him in the UFC. My only issue with him is he's good. It's not like he's a scrub that just gets bulldozed. He's really good. And it, it's just in every fight, there's always a moment where he's doing well and then something just goes horribly wrong. Like one, it's like, it's not just like a must make mistake, but it's like a fatal mistake. It's like, the Johnny Walker fight was one of them where, I mean, we Johnny just kind of caught him with a shot on the side of the head and crumpled. But it was um this fight with Wellington Thurman, he, he had Wellington down and on, on the ground, and he was um, hitting him with some really nice shots. And I'm thinking, like, you know, this is going to be over. He's going to get the victory in the first round. Wellington survives. Second round. Gets Wellington to the ground again. And this time, he's swinging wildly, and Wellington caught one of those arms. And it was curtains. When he tapped, I didn't even know why he was tapping until I saw it again. I mean, I didn't even see the, arm, the his arm on the far side being trapped. 
I saw him looking up to rain down some more shots, and then next thing you know, fights over. What referee's waving it off? I mean, to be fair, in the first round when he had him down on the ground, he was unloading those heavy, heavy shots from the top. He he was having a lot of success with it, but everyone knows it's a dangerous thing to do because you can get caught in an arm bar, and I think he just got a little too comfortable in that position. So, to be fair, I, I get why he thought he could get away with it, but that's a rookie mistake, let's be honest. You know what else he got away with? My fucking uh, money. My my, 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 my my fight money. Your units? How many units? <laughs> my fight money. One Bro, no, listen. Half worse than that. Worse. Worse. You want to know how gross it was? He was the the last leg of a, my, a parlay. Oh. So I had like, I think I had four, I had four fights. I went win, 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 him. Ouch. Mm-hmm. And you know what's you know, here's what makes it even more gross. This is what makes it even more gross. I added him in last, uh, knowing that it was, it was like it was it was a little skeptical. I was like I should go. I'm gonna, I was like I'm gonna stick at three. But then I saw the name. I'm like I'm gonna give you a chance at middleweight, and I'm gonna give you a chance on a small bet like parlay situation. If you can come through for me, give you some more um love. Mm-mm. He, he he done, but shout out to Wellington Thurman for um fucking up my fight ticket. Great job, my guy. I mean, great he job. did a great job surviving and coming back with that win. I mean, it was it was can't hate dude, on him outside outside of my own personal like beef with the outcome because of like obviously the wager. I would give I give Wellington Thurman a lot of credit. He looked really he's like I said he survived that first round where a lot of people could have been stopped and ended up getting the getting the finish in a second early in a second so yeah man i'm definitely um this is a guy to watch out for when it comes to brazilian jiu-jitsu because this man can finish and i think he had the champ the 205 champ in his corner mr yes. uh glover Teixeira representing his um countryman it was uh, it was good Moving yeah, on, to he was the, just as surprised as the rest of us that he got that arm bar. I don't know, man. That looked pretty fluid. <laughs> Can we go to a segue real quick, though? Another thing I'm very confused about was uh, Priscilla in that last fight. She also earned her purple belt in jujitsu. For what? One takedown. She got one <laughs> takedown, and one that gave her one. a purple belt? Mark, I don't think she earned a belt <laughs> In that fight, I think they were just going to reward her the belt on live. Like she got it, in, she got it in the gym. Not good timing <laughs> because she showed absolutely no technique in any aspect of her game. Oh man, <laughs> I'm laughing my ass off because I'm like, you know, I do, I do find that funny when they give them the belts in in the ring because it's like, uh, <laughs> it is awesome. Because I, I think I remember, was it Woodley that got his black belt when he choked out Darren Till? With the so. darts, but yeah, see, I'm good with that because he choked somebody out in that fight, and it's not somebody that you expect to do that. So yeah, I'm good with it. Like that's cool. Um, there's been a couple other people. Who else was there? I think Bob or Kevin Holland earned another belt in the fight because he choked out somebody. When you choke out somebody or win by submission or just do great grappling during that whole damn fight, I'm good with it. But, I mean, when you show that you can barely strike and you only get one sloppy takedown when you're desperate, that's not a time to give you a new belt. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're getting the belts. Are, I think the belt was already going to be given. I think it was like, <laughs> no matter what the result, you're going to... I think it's awesome that the guy, the people we mentioned earlier, like Tyron and um, Kevin, they, they used jujitsu and then they happened to get the belt after... But I think it was going to happen no matter what. I think it's what you did before. But it's funny as shit, though, that she didn't do a goddamn thing jujitsu related. And she got, like, you know what I mean, her purple belt. But shout out to her, um, for her for getting the purple belt because that is tough. Yeah. What's that uh, middle? That's in the middle, right? 
I think, uh, I think there's only two, two or three higher. I think brown and black yeah. might be the only two that are higher than white, purple. blue, purple, brown, black, brown, black. Yeah, so in the middle, yeah. then you got degrees of black. But yeah, no, there's, I think there's degrees of all of them. Are there? Know. Yeah, didn't know that. I thought it was just black belt and then second degree black belt, and you get more stripes or whatever. Yeah. I am not a jujitsu or martial artist. I just like watching other people and judging them. <laughs> on their technique. <laughs> uh, speaking of technique, man, this Islam Makashev. 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 This dude's a technical wizard. We say, we we speak, we talk a lot about him in the opening to this about how much he's not like Khabib and maybe his grappling isn't as dominant as Khabib. I'm going to say it's better. I'm gonna say it's better. And here's why I'm gonna say it's better. I'm, here's why I'm gonna say Islam Makashev's <clears throat> grappling is better. It's better because he moves from position to position more smoothly, and he gets the finish. Like he don't just ground and pound you to a decision win. He puts you in a spot where there is no escape, and his ground and pound is much more dangerous. He su- he finishes with subs. Habib did do this later in his career once he was champion. He, he was able to get submission finishes. But if you look at Habib's run to the title, it was mostly the shit decisions. Makashev's a finisher. He gets he gets from position to position. He puts you in a compromised spot like he did with Bobby Green. Um, he got Bobby Green down um, in the middle of the first round. Bobby did a good job of defending the first initial grappling exchanges. Up against the cage, he struggled. Uh, he struggled a little bit, but still fought off some submission, some grapple attempts. But then, once he got him to the ground, he went from side control to from half guard side control mount back mount finish, and it was like seamless. That dude got his technique is flawless, and I will say I must. I'm I wasn't on the Islam train before. Choo choo. Not, and it's not because of what I saw in this fight versus Bobby Green. It's more of what I saw from Islam. Like he came out and said, "I'm going to finish this fight in the first round." Promised it, delivered it, and he it's just how technically sound he was in this fight. Bobby Green's a tough out. Like he's not just a guy who will give up easily or anything like that. So for him to just come out and just steamroll, I know it's ten. I know it's on a short notice. I know it's 10, 10 days. I know all those things. I'm taking that into account. I'm just letting it, I'm just letting it know. Let me know. This this is the champ. Hey. The other day I was telling Mark what I thought the difference between uh Habib and Islam was, and it was uh strength with technique and just overall technique with some strength. And that's Islam. His technique is what he did. Besides grabbing the fence and whatnot, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Like, I give him that. Like, I'm ready to see him versus uh Charles or Justin. And he's even opened up as the I think a negative 400 or 300 favorite against either one of them. Mm. So if they the the odds are like that already, then they they got it. They know. Oh my goodness! I just now looked at the. <laughs> the odds for this fight negative 900 <laughs> to plus 600 holy shit i didn't know it yeah was they like didn't that. give him a chance yeah wow that and it, it looked it looked like negative 900 oh it, it definitely did that was like uh bet on me if you want to win some kind of money this is one of those yeah. fights where people would like get they get uh remember the nunez Versus Pena fight, where the one better bet like a quarter million. Well, he bet over a quarter million. He bet three hundred thousand on Nunez to win, and then he obviously lost because Pena got the victory. But this is one. This is what. This is what that looks like. This is when you see a guy like uh, Islam, a minus nine hundred, uh, absolute. Like you, you know it's going to be a victory. That's when you see guys just like completely load up and. You're betting, I mean, at minus 900, 
and you, if you're betting like you know a quarter million or whatever or more, then it makes sense because you're gonna get, get a nice little return, and you pretty much a guarantee you got a guarantee you win. I mean, obviously, um, it's a fight, so sometimes that doesn't go your way. But if you bet him his entire career, which in his short career in the UFC is undefeated, you're gonna be printing money pretty much the entire time, every single time he fights. I need to look at his loss against this dude. Our little uh, friend sent me a picture of the dude's record after he beat Islam. I mm-hmm. think it was all losses or something right after that. From 2015. <laughs> he knocked him out in the first round. Mm-hmm. Sure did. I want to see that fight and then the show you can fight. I want to see how that went down. That was a good one. It was it ended up being a decision, but that... <clears throat> that was a, a that was a pretty that was a very competitive match, much more competitive than any of the notable guys that um, Islam has fought since. Like, cause he, I mean, obviously he got the win over Dan Hooker, now Bobby Green, two guys who are notably tough strikers. But Armand is a grappler. Yes, I was about to say styles make fights, and they they have a similar style, so therefore. They're more prepared for each other, in a sense. So it could be a very, I, I would, I would be willing to watch that again at, in a couple, couple extra fights with Armand, just because they're they probably both evolved since then, and I want to see that. On the note of Habib versus Islam, I think Islam has great technique, and I think that Habib has that technique, but he just used his strength and heaviness on it. And when it comes to transitions with Habib, I think that Habib just never had to transition. He could destroy you on side control. Like, <laughs> he gets you down and he has any position. He's just taken over. That's how he always was. So I just, I don't think he ever transitioned that much just because he didn't need to. And he was comfortable in every position. But yes, I'm with y'all. I'm giving Islam a complete pass on all the criticisms that I had before on him and he can go straight to a title shot. I'll have no argument with it and it'll be an interesting fight no matter who he faces up there. You got a shout out to Bobby Green though for defending that takedown forever before he actually got it. Well, he did took it to the final short notice and put on a, he gave the kind of effort that you would expect a minus 600. You know, plus 600. He gave effort. He did. He tried. Hey, man. He said he likes to eat sushi and stuff. So, he blew up in between fights. That's why it was at catch weight. And mm. Well, I didn't said, want him hey, to nobody, cut that weight. Nobody was going to take the fight. He called out all the other lightweights for not taking the fight. Yes, that's true. The amount of weight that they cut, that that quickly like back to back you can't really expect that no one fights that way even when um what's his name who's the other hype train right now the bigger guy that fights at 170 and 85 jamayev yeah he even switched between 170 and 85 between all those fights like he he wasn't cutting down to 70 every time didn't he uh did he debut at 185 or was it 170? Then he took the 185 fight like a week later. I want to say it was 170. Took the 185 fight and then went down to 170. Yeah, that bubble was serious over there in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all ready to move on to uh pre preview the grudge match, the rivalry? Oh, the friendships, friendship. the two best friends. Yeah, man. My two best friends. <laughs> Roommates. Yo. Homies. Gym mates. As a uh, thing to this, I don't know if it's still on YouTube, but a long time ago, there was a video of them two just rolling around, wrestling each other in their apartment for like 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say Kobe had the advantage or Masvidal had the advantage. It was pretty fair. They were just chilling. And I guess one of their friends decided to just record them because they thought it was hilarious. And now we got a scrap between them. The UFC's promoting this one. 
Oh yeah. I finally seen the whole burning of the pictures and stuff. <laughs> but this card's got but, it's actually pretty good. This card's point of view. It's pretty good. This card is this card is extremely deep. Like I'm looking at the prelims, the early prelims, and on the early prelims, I mean, we got Jessica I. Holy shit. Ticking on uh well, she's a huge underdog actually. Ticking on uh is it Manion Fiart? She she French? Where are you from? The Beast? Where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, that's actually a good fight. Uh I think she mm. I don't know. I, I wanted to say Canadian, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. French. She's French. She is French. Okay. French, what? Canadian, same what? thing. Cap. <laughs> Looking at her name. <laughs> we come from France. <laughs> Conan. I, I was just, reading, just judging off of her name. I was like, that looks like a very French name. Um, but yeah, she's she's 18 and eight and one, so very early in her career. Um, only nine fights, but she's a she's opening up as a huge favorite in this one versus Jessica I, Jessica Evil I, and that's only one fight on this on this card. That's the early prelims at that too. Yeah, and yeah, that's the early prelims. Uh, cousins fighting too, Umar. Yeah, Umar's on this one. He's a heavy um, favorite too. Yep, minus six hundred, right? Versus um, Brian Keller. 7-20. Oof! Oh, that's a good fight, too. Jeez. Tim Elliott's fighting uh, Tagir Luben B. Kov. <laughs> Ulan B. Kov. Ulan B. Kov. S- say it with me. Ulan B. Kov. Ulan B. Kov. Kov. That sounds like a bad guy in a Bond movie. <laughs> I ain't say nothing. I am a Gil Lundbikov. I come here because you bro, I ain't ate my Oreos. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I'm just here, bro. <laughs> He's got a, a really solid record. 14-1 and one, fighting out of uh, Russia. Why well, ain't saying nothing? Why well, you ain't saying nothing, bro? They gonna come for you. You, you scared? They gonna come for your family? I'm scared of him. Wait till you see him. Mm, not really. <laughs> He said, it's very good, but Brick don't hit back. <laughs> Brick don't hit back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. the prelims, we got... Uh, who were they? I'm not sure who... Oh, I thought it was the same name. Mar- Marina Moros against Mariah Agapovo. I'm not sure who they are, but hopefully this is a good scrap. I don't know. The women come to fight every time. There, there's not very many disappointing women fights. I mean, some of them are kind of old school nostalgia type fights, where they they remind me of old school UFC scraps. But they come to fight. They're always entertaining, and I'll always watch their fights. Well, Agapova, uh, I remember her from what D- the Demon Slayer, as she calls herself. She was like a really heavy prospect when she first started. And she kind of got a little bit of a, like, a derailed a little bit. Wait a minute. Spent too much time in the tanning booth. Isn't Jermaine the not... enemy Iron Lady? Mm-hmm. So Bro. this lady's also Iron Lady. Ooh, somebody's a biter. Mosey, it's almost the same as the 700 Pit Bulls, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Iron Lady? What, what are you gonna What are you gonna do? She can How be many iron s- girl or iron woman or person? I don't know. Iron it, iron they. Yeah, <laughs> iron I don't know fist. How it is nowadays, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm saying Get out of here. iron toes. But how many? Listen, with nicknames, you're not gonna. It's not unique. It's not supposed to be like unless you like. There's some that are unique, like I've style bender. That's very unique. Um, but most of the time. This, well, but they're not. Like, for 80% of the, the company, it's something that's already been done. That's true. Um, that's fair. But I would feel like you just shouldn't have a nickname until you find one that's a little bit creative. Or at least wait till the other people are out of rotation and try to come in there. 
Because I'm tired of seeing pit bulls. Yeah, there's a lot. I of really people. am. I swear, uh, Andre was the first one. Or Vlaski. Mm-hmm. That was back mm-hmm. in what, like, 05, 06? Yeah. Like, he been the pit bull, bro. I'm a, I'm leaning I'm leaning with uh oh you it's Ukraine versus Kazakhstan too got some uh, former Soviet states action um I'm gonna lean I mm, I want to lean up yeah you know what I'm gonna take it I'm gonna take it I'm gonna go with um Agapova because I, I, I I'm gonna ride with her I'm gonna keep riding with her until she like gives me a reason to not so. She, she's really good striker. I, I like I like her style. She only has two losses, so I'm I'm riding. I'm riding with you, Maria. I'm riding with you, girl. Yeah, submission on her, on there too. Her last fight was submission. Hey, the fight I want to see is the Marina Rodriguez against the uh, Yan Shao Nan. That's the. Oh one. yeah. I imagine that's definitely title implications. Oh yeah, it's three. And, it's number three and number four. Mariana Rodriguez is on a streak, though. Yeah, she's on the tear right now. Yeah, but I also think that Jan's on a. She just lost, didn't she? She mm-hmm. lost to. She lost badly to Cookie Monster. Carla. Yeah. Yeah. Carla. So I don't. I don't think it's a title implications for her as much as it is for Rodriguez. I don't know. It, it could be because. Mariana, Marina, Mariana, Marina Rodriguez is surging. So if she wins impressively, she takes all her momentum. And she only has, like, I mean, she did, obviously she did lose pretty badly to Carla, but that division isn't exactly, like, stacked. They with both talent. lost to Carla. And I'm pretty right. sure Carla's getting the next title shot. So, right. Yeah. 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 Carla's getting the next title shot. I want to say, isn't that title fight. They already announced when that one's did they, supposed they, uh, to. Or, did they put that up already when it's happening? Is oh, they might not have announced when that's happening. Dude, uh, Rose hasn't fought since, uh, when was it? November? December? Rose fights once a year. No, she had the rematch with uh, Wei Lee. Yeah, she fights like once a year. That was twice. <laughs> that was twice, you're right. Because we saw her so. live. And then, At the very beginning. She fought again, I think, December. I think it was December. Let's find out. Because I'm pretty sure that's the one that's been announced, and it might be in June. I mean, it's the run back from the Ultimate Fighter finale. It's a run back I've been wanting to see for a while, and I'm sure Carla really wants and thinks that she's going to steamroll. Which Carla has leveled up, so, I'd... so it's a good really- matchup. See if they have it that's just on the UFC website hey speaking of uh the main event on the prelims it's uh Jalen Turner against Jamie Malarkey at lightweight mm-hmm. wasn't Jalen Turner or welterweight or am I just confused I thought he was always a lightweight but he's a big one he's 6'3 yeah that's what I'm saying I thought he was a welterweight but I guess he's just his size had me confused yeah, um, in this fight, he's opened up as a favorite versus Jamie, Jamie Malarkey. They're both on win streaks. Jalen has a three-fight win streak, and uh, Malarkey is on He was a, two a fight. Weight, cause he, did he was? He fight Luke. Mm. Uh, he got hurt by Luke. Bad. I'm, that's, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to that fight. That's a really good one. Malarkey's been impressive. He was one yeah. of the guys... He's one of the guys I've been watching, watching out for um, on these on, on these earlier cards, and he's been doing really well. So he he's in my short list of people that I'm betting on. And I'm like, oh, I'm I'm gonna look at you in the future because he's been doing really well. So he's got my I attention. Agree. Yeah, Malarkey in his last couple of fights have like really impressed me. So I think he's definitely somebody to watch going on from now on. It's a tough division, but yeah, his last two uh, TKO victories. Mm-hmm. Definitely doing something to watch. This that and that's another. There's two more names in lightweight. Mm-hmm. The common theme for this 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 um this episode is like lightweights getting it's this deep, man. We've probably talked about twenty fighter fighters, and twelve of them have probably been lightweights. 
I think uh, from five to fifteen are going to look completely different by the end of the year in lightweight. It's safe to say the lightweight division has a legit top twenty, in my opinion. Yeah, like, the top twenty in light the lightweight division, it's all full of like real talent. Like it's in, in the uh, lightweight for um, in the one hundred fifty five pound men's division, real a lot of real talent in that division. Um, moving on to the main card though, we open up with some heavy hitters, some big some big boys, heavyweights, two sixty five plus. We got a former football player, Greg Hardy, Carolina Panthers. Um, some of his fans know him as All Pro defensive end. Some of his haters know him as the wife beater. <laughs> but Greg Hardy uh, taking on Sergey Spivak. I'm pretty sure everyone that doesn't like Greg Hardy was they, they basically came when he not got knocked out by. Um, Shui Vasa by Bam Bam a couple of months ago, a month or, a month or so ago. Uh, now he's taking on Sergey Spivak, and this is uh, he's another underdog here. How does Greg Hardy, outside of his name and being a recognized pro athlete, continue to get these main event slots? Is it because he's a heavyweight and he has a name? Because it ain't it ain't what he's doing in the cage. I mean, it was what he was doing in the cage early on. Early on, he, you know, didn't look like the greatest martial artist, but had them hands and had that heavy hand that was knocking people out. So besides, like, inhaler gate um, and a couple, like, boring decisions that he had, he was a name. The controversy around him also had people wanting to see him get knocked out, which they got their wish in his last two fights. He got knocked out in both of them. But it's that's all it is. He's just a name. He's a name. I don't think he'll ever be champ. I don't think he'll ever climb to those ranks. He doesn't seem to be progressing the way that he should be and making the big enough strides like Shui Vasa has. You could see... You can see the development in Shuivasa. You can see how he has progressed. Greg Hardy has been the same Greg Hardy since his third fight in the USC. FC. He progressed a little bit and then has not since. And it's just... What he's outmatched he now. You know what camp he's with? No. Not personally. I would assume somewhere in Florida... Well, either way, it's, yeah, he's a name. He's a name. It's Greg Hardy, bro. He, he used to tackle everybody. He sacked everybody. You name it. <laughs> like, he's a football player that was very popular and got in trouble with the law for putting his hands on a woman. And now he's here putting his hands on men. And I, I think, look past that. I look past the women. I do too. No, you know, look, I, it's not, I don't look past it. I'm, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that that happened, but I think everybody deserves a path to redemption. Like he, Second chance, I mean, right? Yeah. He, I mean, he, I believe it. Yeah. Just, I mean, just because you did some fucked up shit in your past doesn't mean you, you're human garbage and should be just thrown away. Um, and I'm, I, I'm hoping that, you know, that is just in the past and you can continue with a career. Uh, the polar bear has other plans, though. So this is going to be an interesting one. He's opened up as a minus two twenty favorite on the booking that I'm looking at right now. Um, both guys are coming off a loss, though. So, so uh, this is somebody got to get a win. Who, who uh, I'm not sure who. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Greg Hardy and by KO, and then just see how that works out. Greg Hardy get, uh, trains at ATT. Okay. Is that American Top Team? Mm-hmm. Which one? South uh, Florida? Florida? I'm pretty sure it's South Florida. Because okay. I, I remember him being in Florida. So I'm assuming it's the South Florida ATT. This next bout is at 170 pounds, and we got the debut of the mouth. The big mouth, Kevin Holland. Taking on Brazilian cowboy Alex Oliveira. Kevin's opened up as minus 260. 
Uh, I think it should be higher or lower. Mosey. That's fair. Fair? I want to know how he's ranked 14 all already before even fighting <laughs> in the welterweight division. <laughs> but, I mean, it's fair. He better watch out, though. The Brazilian cowboy got some, some hands. And he can wrestle. And he got jujitsu. So, he better be careful. It's a veteran he's going against. He might be able to talk some smack and whatnot, but he better be careful. He could go night night. I feel like that's the same same problem they both have though. Because Kevin Holland's his his ground game is underrated. It really is. You just don't see enough of it because he loves his hands. And he can strike, he can knock you out, and I think at one seventy, he'll carry a lot of that power still down there. So I, this is a great matchup to me. I'm very excited for it, actually. I want to see Kevin Holland at 170. I liked him at 185, but hey, let's see what happens. I'm taking Kevin Holland. I think he's going to – this fight doesn't leave the first round. He's going to beat the shit out of Oliveira, man. I'm not even – I mean, look, Oliveira is a veteran. I give him that. He's does how he's, I mean, he has a lot of fights, but – I think this is um, this is just a coming out party at 170 for Holland and nothing more. I can't I can't really see a path to victory at all for Oliver. I am also questioning though how he ended up ranked 14 already. <laughs> My bad. He's 14 at middleweight. They didn't specify. Okay. That. They didn't specify. Okay. That. They didn't specify that. <laughs> Cause Honestly, I was, if he wins, like, he might fuck? get like he might end up fighting uh one of these up and comers, like like uh, um Shaftcat. Mm-hmm. He got ranked finally. He's fifteen. Mm-hmm. So that's a dangerous one there. Holland might either go against Jingling or Shaftcat if he wins. That's why I, I think. Well. In this next fight, we got it. This is this is my potential knockout of the night contender with SM Barbosa taking on Thug Nasty Bryce Mitchell. You think he's gonna knock him out? This could be a war too, because they both guys are um, really skilled in the stand up. It's a Styles fight. Yeah, it's 100%. definitely a Styles fight. It's jujitsu versus. Kicks at high speed. That boy got that Xfinity broadband 2.0 hyperdrive quick speed kicks. Yeah. I don't know, man. They don't like each other apparently. Uh, so, uh, for some weird reason, really? there was a lot of there was a lot. Of, yeah, I was, I was like this. Edson was like saying some. I want to kill you type shit like like I wanted to hurt you I was like just like looking at some stuff online really it's apparent apparently I don't know I don't, I don't know why I don't know the the background but I I don't know anything about that actually I need to look into that because that might be a little interesting but maybe Edson's just trying to hype himself up trying to get back to the old killer Edson I don't, I'm I'm not sure but in my opinion I'm picking Bryce Mitchell in this one. I think he submits Barboza. Okay. You got, a, you got Bryce by sub? Yeah, I got Bryce by sub in second. Okay. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a favorite, one, minus 155. And this is, this is 10 versus 11. I'm leaning Barbosa. I think he pretty much only loses to elite competition. And I'm not quite sure if Bryce is elite yet. I, think, I know he's I very good. No, he's very good. He's very good. He's damn good. But um, I guess this is, this is the test. We'll see. But I, I, will, I would lean Barbosa here, personally. I see Bryce Mitchell getting towards the top five by the end of the year. Okay. If he fights twice this year, I say he's close to the top five. I'm not, I'm not sure about in top five, but close to it. You know what? I, I think I remember the sound bite. I think it was like how Bryce was saying that, like, if he was in jail or something like that, that like he would like have his way with 
certain fighters. Barbosa responded to that, saying that he would do that to him. <laughs> that sounds like was. a weird exchange. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm like, what, man, what? Like, what, how would your mind even take that path? But this sounds okay. like some Sean Strickland shit, whatever. Look, man, <laughs> you can't, I mean, there's some, some fighters, you can, you can open their mouth and out comes poetry. And then the other ones, they open their mouth and it's like you get hit in the head a lot. <laughs> Can you say C T E? Yeah. It's like sometimes <laughs> like I'm like, okay, they, you still you you sound like you were that you thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but then like sometimes it's like, ooh man, like, yeah. Good thing you know how to fight. Cause yeah. That's not everyone can be Chael Sonnen. Exactly. Not everybody can be Uncle Chael. Right. Or um, Israel or Connor. Like sometimes people open their mouth and sometimes fighters open their mouth. And obviously the attempt is to make a soundbite, make a name and end up getting more money for your fights and getting more viewership, which equals more money. But sometimes it just goes right into the cringe pile. Right. Um, but yeah, Mo, you got any you got any takes on this one? Bryce Mitchell and uh, Barboza. Barboza. I'm hoping it's um either a spectacular submission or a spectacular knockout, like the knockout Barbosa had when who was the guy? Burgos, Shane Burgos, the delayed knockout. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Like that dude was done, and then his body was like, "Hey, man, all systems off." Then he fell down. I hope it's something along those lines. I hope it's like a twister or something for the submission or just a nasty wheel kick like how he hit Terry Adam back in the day. Something like that. That's what I'm hoping for because, like I said, it's a, a styles clash. So I'm hoping for one or the other, either a great submission or a great knockout. I hope it doesn't go to decision with just Bryce Mitchell taking him down Hold him, hold him down, trying to get a sub the whole time. I hope it's not like that. I I want to see something spectacular, especially for being in the middle of the card. I want to see something spectacular so we can move on to the uh, Rafael against Rafael fight. Yeah, I mean, with the Barboza, like I love Barboza to death. I've always rode with him, and I've loved every fight that he's been in, almost. But I just think he's he's lost a step, and I don't love him at 145. That's all. He's just he's got the mileage on him, and I think it's a new new age coming in. That's Sun Kim's dude too. Yeah. Pew! This man just catching stray up the stray. <laughs> I'm gonna give a shout out to Bright Mitchell because he got he can rap. Yo, he got mixtapes. Yeah, Doug Nasty got, got some like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. First yeah, fighter with Bryce. camo shirts, too. Right? I, I'm, look, I am picking, I'm still picking Barbosa to win, but I think Bryce does have a uh, good skills. So I'm going to give him a shout out for the mic skills. Um, moving, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to uh, the battle of the Raphaels. Rafael versus Rafael. Fizayev, Fizayev versus Dos Santos. Man, I this fight this fight keeps me up at night because common knowledge says bet the house on Rafael Fazayev. That's what common knowledge says. It says like this dude surging, he's tough as nails, and has all the skills you want. He's opened up as an almost minus three hundred favorite. And Rafael is probably on the downturn of his career. You know, like at this point in his career. Obviously, Rafael was a former light, light heavyweight. Well, light weight champion. This is another add two more names to the lightweight list that we've been just going hard about. I'm I'm a really big fan of Rafael Dos Anjos, especially the, the latter ver the past versions of him. But 
I think that run at 170 might have taken its toll. So I'm really the way you feel about Barbosa about him being, you know, a little bit more on the down decline mark. Mm-hmm. I feel that way about Rafael Dos Anjos. I feel like at this point he's only going to be I'm not saying he'll never reach the top. I don't ever want to put a cap on anybody's game cuz who knows. A few you all you have to do really is string together three or four wins with a name like that and you're right back in it. This is going to be hard to come by, in my opinion, because it's not that his skills are diminished. I just feel like he just has the mileage and the time that he's just getting a little bit older and the mileage is starting to pile up. And this is a young, hungry lion he's going up against, man. I'm I'm leaning heavy toward Fazayev, not just because he's a favorite, but I just think that this is one of those fights, like, I don't think you're ever going to... This is one of those fights where... You know how earlier we talked about the betters putting like quarter million on a guy who's minus nine hundred, and he's just you just you know you're gonna win. This is one of those sweet spot ones where you do the same thing here, but you're paying significantly less. Instead of paying minus nine hundred, you be paying minus two eighty or minus three hundred. I think this is a slam dunk for Fazayev. I do not see Rafael winning this at all, bro. Like not even a little bit. But that's just my one. This is my one. My opinion is it. So, how y'all feel? This is a huge step up for him. It really, it really is. Like his last two fights were Green and uh, Rydell, who are both veterans themselves. But Rafael has had success in the highest forms in both. Um, one seventy and one fifty five. I mean, he had some success in 170 we can't really take that away but i agree it, he's same thing with barboza i think he's lost a step i think he had a long road to becoming lightweight champ in the first place and all that mileage caught up to him after becoming lightweight champ and now it's just wearing him down now and uh Fazeev, he's just he's surging he's a young hungry still developing i think he's just gonna come in here and make a big statement on where he he lays in the lightweight division with this one. Yeah, the only way I see uh, RDA winning this fight is if he could somehow turn back the clock to when he was going for the title when he fought Pettis and after that when he was just dominating everybody. That's the only way I see him winning. If not... Raphael, how you say it? Fazizev? Fazev? Fazizev. Fazizev. What, what's his, uh, his, his call sign? Adaman. Adaman. If Adaman, he might knock him out, bro. His striking is, is, is beautiful. I remember watching, where did we watch that one? Uh, the tournament, right? CEO? Mark, yeah. CEO, right? Yeah, we were at CEO. Yo, that, that was a display of, like, Great striking, and he was like one step ahead with, uh, against uh, Brad Riddell. So mm-hmm. he might knock out RDA. I'm going with knockout. Raphael, not not a silent R <laughs> or whatever you want to say. <laughs> I'm going with Raphael <laughs> with the R. <laughs> so either way, that, that's what I'm picking. I like knockout. Team. Cause I have knockout. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. I like that too. This is one. Of the, that's, that's. This is a fight where, like I said, you load it up yeah. it's time. and uh, and reap the benefits. Time caught this up is, to uh, RDF, Phil man. He's been in the game for years. We're all on the same page on this one. Knockout. Time. Time is not kind in this sport. Undefeated at all. Mm-hmm. Father Time is undefeated. There's only been a few guys to, to get the title late in their careers or in their 40s or compete in their 40s. We've seen it in the heavier weight classes with Randy Couture um, getting the title in his 40s and, and then competing into his 40s. And we also saw it, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, Glover Teixeira on his latest tear. Cormier. 
Daniel Cormier as well. I mean, it, it's the heavier weight classes, you see some of the guys in their late 40s. And obviously, Andre Ovlowski is immortal. Because he's like in his late 40s, he's still competing. He's a vampire. He got to be. But you don't, you, you, typically speaking, you don't see that. The guys compete very late in the lower classes because there's so much dependent on timing and speed and quick twitch that that starts to slowly take, slowly go away as you get in the higher 30s. Whereas in the heavier weight classes, it's more about power and size w- coupled with technique and not so much quick twitch movement. Right. It's more just flat out explosion versus actual tech or like quick technique. Uh, I mean, RDA is only 36, but he has, this will be his 43rd fight. He got miles, bro. He's got all the miles. He's like, I don't know how um, Aldo's still doing it, but Aldo has all the miles on him, even though he's still like, I, I want to say the same, 36. Thirty-five. Oh, really? Yeah. Almost what? younger. I know why. Here's why: the mileage ain't the same. Rafael dos Anjos got city miles. He been rolling over <laughs> potholes, speed bumps. You know what I mean? Dodging raccoons. This is not the same thing. Like the compare it between Rafael and Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo was the hammer for most of his career. It wasn't like Fair. he had these up and down fights. He was like the person giving the beat downs for most of his career. So that's why his career is long, but not as tumultuous. Like Jose Aldo has highway miles. It's just been going 65 plus, not worrying about speed bumps or raccoons or potholes and all that. He only 35, bro. He's technically in his prime, Aldo. Technically, yes. Yeah. Aldo's technically in his prime right now, physically. Yeah. 35. Which I, I probably wouldn't argue it too much. The fact that he's keeping up with all these young bucks, as weird as that seems to say about somebody that's only 35. <laughs> <laughs> but thirty, but fight, fight 35 ain't the same as life 35. Right. Like normal yeah. 35. Yeah, normal 35 and fight 35 ain't the same. You've been fighting since you're like 18. It's yeah. different. So yeah. Yeah. You know. And I, I feel like I'm kind of disrespecting Rafael Dos Anjos a lot. I don't want to. I, like I said before, I'm a huge fan. I just, there just comes a point when I don't want to let my fandom get in the way of how I view the contest. Because I am a fan, and frankly, like, I mean, I wouldn't be, I, I, I'm pulling for him as far as, like, his, like, his, as far as, like, the personal things goes. Like, I'm like, yeah, I hope he does well in his career outside of, I mean, outside of this fight, I'm going to bet for, for Zayev, dude. Like, I'm not even making it. Like I said, man, if, if RDA could go back to the takedown heavy ground and pound domination that he did, like, what, 10 years ago? Then he's probably going to win. Well, assuming that, wait, that's that, we're assuming that that he can do that against. Ago? Wait, we're assuming that he can ago. do that. Yeah, assuming because uh, Rafael with an R does not get taken down. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say ninety five percent takedown defense. That's what it is. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And also, he's got a he's got a the reach advantage in both leg leg and arm reach um, by two inches. So I I don't think that it's I think you we're assuming that he has the edge there. I don't even know if he has the edge in grappling versus Rafael Fazayev. I mean, if you're basing it off his past accomplishments, may, yes, Rafael has the Dos Anjos has the edge. But if you're basing it off today, not what they did before, but who they are right now. Like how how my boy Van Vliet said, "Want to now? Oh, want to now? Want to now? Want to now?" Wanna now. Like if you're basing it off that, Fizayev has the edge, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let you get too close. Soon, Soon. <laughs> I just want oh to know God. if there's a date. 
Oh my god. I understand. I just stop don't it. know the date. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Please. <laughs> Please stop it. No more. Bro, hey, no Kevin more, was bro. I showed Kevin that clip and he lost his mind, bro. He was like, No more, bro. No for more. the rest of the day. The rest of the night. No I can't uh, let you get close. I can't let you get I can't let you get too close. Yo, they jumped uh Chael though. The other yeah. cats. Uh, it, was, it wasn't like one of his teammates, like or his uh I don't know. One of uh, Vanderlei's oh, that's boys on his team jumped in yeah, and they, started yeah. punching him. They, they, they hit him <clears> in the <throat> noggin. Top of the noggin. No, nah, that was Vanderlei. Vanderlei elbowed him. That's no, like no, no, cut. No, no, no. His, uh, his, uh, the teammates. Yeah, one of uh, Vanderlei's uh, team got, Somebody kid got, got a couple hits in, and he celebrated like he won something. I no. Don't know. He, did, he, he did win something. He, he won a freedom from a UFC contract. He got uh, he got kicked off the show for that. <laughs> Whoop! Hey, did they fight in the UFC? They didn't fight in the UFC, right? They fought in Bellator, right? Yeah, they fought, they fought versus... in Bellator, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Because Vanderlei um, had a mistranslation and ran away from Usada. All right, uh, okay, <laughs> let's get back on track. <laughs> In fact, let's get right to the main, the meat and potatoes of this car. We got number one, Kobe Covington, taking on Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. I have never, I repeat, ever put a quarter, a dime, a nickel on Masvidal in a fight. I bet against him every single fight he's ever been in. Um, not, not 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 in his career, because obviously that'd be terrible for me. And every time he's been in a big spot, I've not bet against him. You bet I got him when he fought Nate. I got yes, I got smoked twice. I got smoked twice. He, I bet against him with when he fought Ben Askren, and oh. I got yep. And that that turned out to be a, a meme. I, I bet against him. <laughs> I bet against him when he almost killed Nate Diaz with blood loss. Damn, bro. So I think I'm gonna have a change of heart in this one. I would have bet against finally, him when he fought Usman twice, though. I, but I bet I bet with Usman twice. Okay. So I was I'm fifty fifty. I'm fifty fifty. I bet I only I've only bet. Jorge Masvidal four times. Well, bet in a Jorge, Jorge Masvidal fight four times. I bet against him all four times. I got a question, though. All four times. I got a question, though. Before, wait, I'm going to say I'm going to go out on a limb right now. Right and now. And let everybody mm-hmm. know. I'm taking Jorge in this matchup. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I believe in him, yo. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. I got you don't want to lose your running streak of losing money? I mean, I guess. I got a question. Because I'm 50 50. I'm 50 50. I got a real good question, though. 50 50. For both of y'all. You ready? What so, you got? I'm ready. Do you guys think Kobe's going to stand up with Jorge after seeing Usman knock him out and he stood up with Usman twice? What do you think? Yep. Yes. He ain't gonna yep. wrestle. No wrestle. Uh, well, I think he'll I, do actually, both. you know what? He might not wrestle him. Cause like I was saying earlier, that they wrestled a lot before. And it just seemed like one got in position and the other one reversed and got in position. So it seemed like they were like kinda similar. They know each other. Not that, that saying uh Jorge is has great wrestling, more along the lines of like he knows his tricks. Like, I know what you're going to do. He knows the matchup with Kobe's wrestling. So, you think there's just going to be a whole stand-up fight with that? Yeah. No, I think Kobe will mix it up. I think Kobe will mix it up, and that'll be to his advantage. Whether he's, he's going to be heavy on game planning to take him down and just try to dominate on the ground, I don't think that's going to happen. I just think that he's going to mix in his takedowns for looks. Because I think that's one of the great things that Kobe does, is he mixes it up enough to where he can outstrike almost anyone. But that's just my opinion. 
and I'm for the first time in a long time, I'm actually rooting for Kobe in this one. Here's my take on this. I see. I think it's a tale of. Uh, misconceptions I feel like people think Kobe's wrestling is what gives him the edge when it's actually Kobe's striking is way underrated by most like they don't he's technically very very good striker and doesn't get the credit for it and the same is with Masvidal like I think he doesn't get the credit for how good his gra- grappling actually is. Like, um, Usman in the first fight couldn't really get Jorge to the ground. He was able to stalemate him on the fence and stump his feet um, over and over, but he wasn't able to get him to the ground and dominate him in the way he did, what he could early in his career versus most opponents. Um, Kobe Covington, on the other hand, he, he put on clinics in the stand-up versus Rafael Dos Anjos. He did it versus Robbie Lawler. He looked damn good twice versus the champion in Kamaru Usman. He looked really good. Um, although, I mean, obviously, Usman was able to be, um, you know, put it to him in the first one, TKO him, and edge him out in the second one in a five-round decision. Kobe's stand-up still looks phenomenal. That's why I believe this is going to be a stand-up kickboxing fight. Not because um, there's a perception by the public that Kobe is a better wrestler, so that's going to be like you know where he's going to go with it. I believe that Kobe thinks in his mind, and he might be right, honestly, that he's the better striker. And Masvidal believes the same thing, that he's a better striker. I think there's going to be a battle of who's going to win the kickboxing match. Like Mo said, they've already grappled with each other before plenty. So they know what's up when it comes to grappling. And the problem with that is if you get into a – it's a five-round fight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The problem where you see a lot of grapplers are actually shying away from is if you get into a grapple-heavy affair early, it's, it's hard to maintain that throughout five rounds. And even, like, you notice, like, Usman's more stand-up now than he is grapple-oriented. Whereas in those three-round fights, he's more grapple-heavy and control-heavy. I think this is going to be a stand-up fight. And this is – here's the thing that – this is how I see it going. I think Jorge is going to knock him out, going to knock Kobe out. Um, I normally don't take guys coming off a knockout loss. I want to see them first. But just given that Kobe's such a huge favorite, is I'm just picking Jorge as a live dog. I think he has a shot, given the fact that he's going to have a lot of opportunity. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to get off shots because it's going to be a stand-up fight. I don't see him being bullied against the cage um, by Kobe in this fight. Strength-wise, right? Strength-wise. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be more of this fight's going to be a kickboxing match, Kobe's volume versus Jorge's slickness because Jorge is slick. Like, he's able to land shots that you can't see coming, which are the ones that knock you out. And Kobe's the guy that overwhelms you with volume and combinations. So it's going to be a battle of which one's going to um, win the day. Will Kobe win the day with his volume? Or will Jorge be able to land something significant um, with his slickness in the boxing range? Because he's very slick. And he usually does well um, in stand-up matches. The knockout against Usman was more him being afraid of being grapple engaged and Usman being able to load up on the right hand and catch him with a punch he didn't see coming. It wasn't because he's a better striker. It was that he had more to worry about. He had to worry about takedowns and the um, the hands from... Um, well, I, I think that he underestimated how good... Kamaru, Kamaru, yeah. I think he underestimated that significantly. Whereas with Kobe... This is a grudge match, and if it doesn't get too emotionally charged, which I doubt, these guys are pros. They're not going to get too emotional about it. Like um, they might do that in the weigh-ins and all that in the lead-up, but once the the glove, the cage closes, it's all it's all business. I like I think I like Jorge. I like Jorge via knockout. I'm taking Jorge 
third round knockout, and I'm even going to call the, the shot. Jorge is going to knock him out with a left hook. Oh, shit. Wow. <clears throat> you know, I agree with 95% of what you're saying, except for I think the – because I, I, I also think it's going to be a kickboxing match. I just think that Kobe's going to threaten some takedowns every now and then. That's all I was saying. I think he, he's still going to want to strike with him the whole time. I don't really think that there's going to be a lot of grappling on the ground. Maybe some cage fighting and some clinch work, but nothing significant. I think it's mostly going to be kickboxing. But the fact that Jorge tends to hesitate a little bit when there's a lot of uh, grapple-heavy threat, I think that'll open up Kobe striking a little bit. And that's the only reason why I, where I switch it. I think that Kobe's going to take a slight advantage in the long run in that sense. But I also think that this is probably going to be a decision win for Kobe. I think um, that's why Kobe's such a heavy favorite. Because that's exactly the path to victory that most but I was I would assume that um anyone breaking this fight down, that's how they see it going. They just see Kobe overwhelming George with volume, pressing him up pressing him up against the cage and keeping him from be, get, generating much at all. And this is just be a breeze. Like he's gonna just kinda, you know, roll George over um with volume and that grappling pressure that Kobe's really, really good at. That I will say this. Kobe doesn't get enough credit for how good he actually is because of um, from from some people who from some because if you look at him fight you don't give him that you give him that credit but if you're just going off the persona and all that you might think he's not as good as he technically is he's really fucking good and technically in my eyes he's kind of where Rob Rob is with Izzy where he's like 1B to Usman in this division. The only difference I would say in this division is that there are some legitimate actual threats to the throne in this. There's a lot, actually, to me, in my mind. Like, I think that Leon F. Yes. 170 Steve, yes. I can, I, can, I can rattle off five names right now that I think can match up well with the champion, like right now. Um, obviously, Kobe's one of those guys. Um, I, I feel like... Chemayev will match up well with Usman. I feel like Shavkant could rap match up really well. I think Kevin Holland could match up really well. And I, I think that um, Leon Edwards can as well. I don't, I'm not saying that any one of those guys will beat him, that will beat Usman. Not what about, one uh, of them. Vicente Luque? Have they I don't fought? Think, I, I, no. They they, no, they haven't. They haven't. But I think um, that's edge. That's advantage Usman in my mind. Yeah, I see Usman. Running through him, to be honest. Bilal? I, well, I don't know if I really want to say run through him, but him. I see dominant. You know. I think, yeah. What about I see advantage. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Who's going to be a 500 favorite in that well, fight? Well, what about uh, Wonder Boy? Now you're just messing with my man. Like, you're, you're playing with him. You're messing with him. You're disrespecting the man right now. Yo, hey, um, honestly, I think I that Wonder Boy can Sean make. Brady, though. Yes, I do want to see more of Sean Brady. I do think Stay that on. Wonder Boy can make Usman look boring. Mm -hmm. Not well, saying he'll that. win, but I'm, I'm saying that he can make him look boring and have a tough fight with him. You know what? I would agree with that. Wonder Boy five years ago, yeah. Not not today. Not today's Wonder Boy, but five years ago, yeah. Wonder Boy's getting feel, old, bro. Yeah. I feel like Wonder Boy is exactly the same, but he's he's got the Machida problem. Everyone figured out his awkwardness. Yep. So therefore, it's not that I don't think he can't compete at that level anymore. It's just everyone learned how to game plan for him already. And he hasn't evolved enough to keep up with the times. All right, so what do you guys think happens if Kobe loses? I don't see him. There's not that big of a. It won't be that big of a deal, really, because um, he's still. I mean, he's number one right now, and we got behind him. Gilbert's taking on Shamayev, right? It, it's supposed to be a set deal. It just hasn't had a set date. You know what? I think yeah. that that might depend on the outcome of this one too. Because like, would it like because Kobe? Let's say Kobe does lose. 
Um, they, they might they, they can line that fight up too. Like a Chimaev, uh versus Covington. It depends on if Chamayev wins or not. I feel well, like. he's not. Well, he hasn't been scheduled yet, right? It's supposed to be a done deal. They just haven't set it for what event. I, yeah. I think I think it is a done deal. They just haven't specified the date yet because they've been trying to expand the places that they go, and they haven't locked down an arena yet. I think they want like, to do it in Brazil, don't they? Yeah, I think they want to do that one in Brazil, but they haven't locked down Brazil yet. Just like they tried to do something in um, Australia, but they couldn't lock that down either. Where's uh, Oliveira and Gaethje fighting at? Uh, T-Mobile Arena, I think. Vegas? Mm-hmm. I don't see why they didn't just put it there, too. I don't hate it. I mean, right now you don't have very many options. The fact that we are going to Europe is amazing to me. So, there's that. I was hoping it's going to be on the one on Jacksonville, honestly, but... It'd be fantastic. I want all the great cards. Can't be too great. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just happy they're coming back. We've we've gotten some pretty amazing fucking fights here. Two pay-per-views. Come on. Oh. Jacksonville's been kind of spoiled, and I love it. Duval. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys think happens in Masvidal if he loses again? Retirement? No. Um, <sighs> Gatekeeper? No. Stepping stone? Which one? No. None. Um, I think this this is this is where I see Jorge's fate if he loses. Money fights. He's only? still money fights only. Because he, he, he has only. A, does money fights now, but I see him as a less of a money fight draw. Like I think it closes down what options he has for money fights. To be honest, no, because he's. I think if him having a loss makes him more vulnerable looking to a guy like Connor, and that's a big Is- money fight. Um, I think. I think if he if he gets beat again, it's like a he'll be in that situation that Cowboy was in, where it's like he looks like a guy that. Uh, can be a a, a a win for Connor at like a catch weight type situation, like maybe Connor fighting at sixty five or one fifty, one sixty five or one seventy, versus Jorge if you lose. Do you think it's more of it's like how he loses, or if, like you know if he loses to a close decision, or loses just gets he gets knocked out again. I think if I mean, he loses, period. Period. I agree with Mark. I agree with yeah. Mark. Look, period, loss period, because that'd be three in a row. Three, three in a row, right? Uh, the the only thing he extends his career like with a loss. The only options I feel like he has at that point, even with the money fight wise, the only money fights you got is Nate Diaz and maybe Connor if he decides to come back at one seventy. Those are your only options with him. And who knows when Connor's coming back? If he comes back personally, I think Connor sticks to being fucking Twitter champ instead of actually ever coming back to fight. That's my personal opinion. And Nate Diaz is trying to find whatever fight he can right now to fight his last fight on his contract and go to boxing, supposedly. I think Connor fights pending on the outcome of. The lightweight title and welterweight matches, honestly. That's where I see Connor fighting. Because he's supposed to be able to have light contact training in May or something like that. So, depending on uh, if... I don't think he wants to see Oliveira. I think he would rather fight Gaethje. Because he knows that fight's going to be a standing fight. I don't see him... Doing well in that fight, either to be honest. No, I think Gaethje walks through uh, Dust or Connor's punches. Right. Honestly. I think he just says "fuck your left hand" yeah. and <laughs> just yeah. I, I think he him. walks them down. And is like no, no, you're done. Yeah. But Connor could compete at the top five of one fifty five. I'm not saying he can't. I'm not saying he can't, but Connor's the type of person that it's either going to be a huge name, easy money. interesting fight, easy money, or it's going to be a title fight. 
He isn't in the title picture. If they give him another title shot, the UFC is just fucking retarded at that point and just money grabbing. And if they give him an interesting fight, there's there's only so many of those. I could see him maybe coming back and having a Tony Ferguson fight. That would be an interesting fight. That would make money. That would be on the level of a cowboy fight to me where it could go either way since they both have lost a step. And they both were, um, they will promote the hell out of it themselves. Correct. I can see that happening. But I don't see him going to 170, maybe 174. He could fight Nick Masvidal. Diaz or Nate Diaz, I mean. Nate Diaz again at uh, 170, finish off the trilogy. It's one and one. But I feel like it's one, zero, and one. I feel like the second I think... was a draw, but. I personally think Poirier and Nate Diaz fight, and that's going to be... I think that'll probably be a 170 fight between those two that have no meaning whatsoever other than just they just want to make a good fight. Money fight. And I honestly think that after that, you probably see Nate Diaz on a Jake Paul pit review. Yeah. That's that's how I see it going. Yeah, because Poirier's not going to try to fight anybody in the top five. I'm pretty sure he wants money fights too. Or we could get maybe Poirier against uh, Masvidal. Do you think Poirier will stay at 170 though? Because I don't think Masvidal ever goes back to 155. But I don't think they would fight just because they train together and everything. No, it would just be a good scrap. Do you think they would fight? Even though they, train I think they would scrap. Yeah. I 100% think they would fight. But I think it would be a respectful fight, and they know it, it is what it is. It's nothing but a money grab. Yeah. I'm not even 100% sure how much Kobe and Masvidal really hate each other. Man, there's all the rumors about this shit's all like, uh, it's, it's, it's fabricated. It's not real. Just like Kobe's uh, whole heel persona. You know what I mean? He's not really yeah. that much of an asshole in real life. It's because he's on camera and he has to say the things he has to say to get his character out there. Is he's playing a character? Right. Like I bet I, he's really I, cool if you meet him outside somewhere. You know I, I mean? do think that he pissed off his gym and they legit did kick him out for good reason. But between Masvidal, who has done some shady shit in the in the past i don't think that he's really taken a lot of this shit to heart and i don't I, i'd say they're probably not friends but i don't think they have a hatred for each other to the extent that you think the or that people think portraying it. i think poirier legit hates him i think that amanda nunez had problems with him and i think that joanna had problems with him I don't know if Masvidal really had the hatred that they're portraying you or whether they're, they're like both on playing it? it. They're in on it? I think they know how to make money. Like, they're probably like, hey, man, hey, come over, bro, but just uh, go around the back. Come through the back gate so nobody sees Like you. I said, <laughs> I don't think that they're, like, best of friends anymore, but I don't think that they hate each other to the extent they're hyping it. What if after the fight, bro, there's, like, a picture of them with, like, I don't even know, just, like, they just got, like, a cup full of beer or something in the back, just, like, what's up? They're going to drink Cheers. Masvidal's tequila, and they're going to have bricks of money in front of them. That's what it's going to be, remember, whether there's photos of it or not. take over the welterweight division. <laughs> Then Masvidal yes. went off and did his uh his little reality show off in Cuba or something. Grew his and hair found out, himself. grew a beard, came back as Street Jesus. If you look at it, both guys competed for the title twice. So one was competitive. Same results. <laughs> All right, guys, you ready to call it? Yeah, let's let's call yeah. this one. All right, on that. You like, well, if you like this content, like and subscribe, give us some shout outs. Hit us up on Twitter at Ashy Knuckles MMA. I am 
B. Woods. That is Mosey P. That is Mark Gar. Holla at ya, boy. Um, don't be shy. Leave us some comments. Holla at us. Let us know. Some feedback. Don't be shy. We'll, we'll talk with you. On that show note, us though. love or show us hate. Let's go. Let me know how quiet I am. <laughs> hey, on that note, zip it up. And zip, zip it, it out. <laughs>